good afternoon so today we are going to discuss on the essential documents for clinical trial myself mrs geetanjali salimat assistant professor department of pharmacy practice kerala college of pharmacy belagavi so here we are going to discuss these are the contents of my slides so first of all like we have to see that what are the essential documents which are required for the clinical trial so already we know that any molecule of the drug when it is developed it will go in the development phase so before we will be like manufacturing the molecule then it will come into the trial phase so here according to this content so we are going to see that first what is the introduction for the essential documents for clinical trial so as you see that all the records in any form that describes or record the methods conduct and result of trial the factors affecting a trial and the actions taken is known as document and the process is known as documentation this is nothing but as uh, i told earlier like we are having the drug development process so in the drug development process after the manufacturing we are as you see the slides we are having the pre clinical uh, stage and later on we will be having the clinical trials so in the clinical trials we are having from phase 1 to phase 4 but sometimes we conduct the phase 0 trials also so in this case the documents are required to conduct the clinical trials in a proper way and it has to be in order and the reports whatever we obtain from the clinical trial it is going to affect the development process of the uh, drugs which are coming into the market so the phase 4 which we call as the phase 4 or the a post marketing surveillance so before coming to the market so there are different stages of the development process and the accreditation or which are given the approvals so here if you see the pre clinical phase the drug which is coming the new molecule which is coming so we are having that interpretation for the new drug so here new drugs will get the approval uh, to be conducted for the trial so once the trial phase is over so we are getting for the uh, post marketing surveillance so this whatever the documents are required for all these phases have to be maintained accordingly so here like we can see that the first component of the essential documents is the trial master file so as we know that whatever we do any actions so always we keep a uh, like main file which in the clinical trials we call as the trial master file so for example if ever we want to see that what are the uh, tests which are done for this particular uh, ip or the investigational product so then we have to go to the master file we have to see there for example if it is 3.1 section so in our master file the third component in that the first component is having the all the lab tests which have to be performed that, for that particular investigational product so here these are nothing but as per the guidelines of I, icsc gcp e6 that is section 8 this describes that these are required at both the investigator or the institution site and the sponsor site so these trial masters have to be maintained at, at the two uh, like levels that is one at the site where the trials are being conducted and another is from the sponsor so here the final close out of a trial can be only done whenever we finish all the components of the trial master file so this has to be maintained properly the file maintained at the site we call that as the site master file and the one which is there with the sponsor is called as the sponsor master file so this master file includes like as i told you so many components are there so to give some examples they may be the medical notes x ray or the tissue samples crfs that is a case report forms etc so this is where you can see the diagram that what are the minimum list of essential documents as per the icf gcp we have to maintain and the totally like other than the main documents there are some supporting documents which are required to be maintained so all these are according to the trial master file next we are having the source documents so source documents are nothing but these are the original documents where we are recording all the details of the patient who is participating in the clinical trials so whenever like for example even if we use the medical records or if we are using any simple paper where we are taking the all the information of the patient so that becomes a source document 
So that source document has to be seen by the principal investigator, that is the one who is conducting the clinical trial. And these documents are very confidential. They should not be shared with the other people who are not part of the clinical trials. So they should be stored in a safe, secure and confidential environment. So usually we are having the paper format, but nowadays the e-source documents are also available. So where we can, it can be stored in a very safe and secure place. So after the end of the trial period, these documents must be archived for a very long time. Like usually before it was 15 years. Now it depends upon the need of the study, like how many years it has to be stored and all. So here, for example, I have given at the right side, some of the source documents like participants' medical reports or like the report, uh, like participants' uh, diaries, like some of the examples which are the source documents. So next we have the uh, essential documents. So in the essential documents, when like uh, we were discussing about the trial master file and all, one of the example to give the essential documents is, I have given that for example, when we want to have the identification of the participant, the one who is participating, we have to have the government recognize some IDs. So this can be like Aadhaar card and all. So this is one example for the essential document. So here next uh, coming to this. So these are the ones which are usually audited by the sponsor independent audit function. And these are inspected by the regulatory authorities as part of the process to confirm validity of the trial conduct and integrity of data collected. So always the essential documents, they are helping us to know that whether our data, whatever we have collected, it is having the reliability or the integrity. So we are classifying these into three sections. That is the documents which we are maintaining before the start of the clinical phase of the trial. So before any clinical trial starts, what documents have to be maintained? Then once it starts during the clinical trial, what documents to be mentioned? And then after the completion of the or termination of the trial, what are the documents required? So if you were like before the trial, when we see, so what has to be there with the file? So usually what happens, the investigator is maintaining all these documents. The file will contain like, for example, signed protocol research, uh, signed re uh, research protocol, that is, as per the protocol, we are conducting the clinical trial. So that has to be signed by the principal investigator. Then patient information sheet where the patient gets the information about the clinical trial. Patient consent form is one where the participant is giving the consent for the clinical to participate in the clinical trial. Then if the any principal investigator has given any advert, advertisement for the recruitment, that has to be there. Then ethical approval documentation like the principal investigator will apply for the ethics committee. So that document, CVs of all teams who are involved in the clinical trial, then signature or delegation law, clinical trial agreement. So, so many are there like to example few uh, we have mentioned like what are required for before the trial. So now during the trial, what is required? So once the clinical trial will start, so we, we need to have some of the documents which shows that the trial is running. So any protocol amendments, for example, uh, the principal investigator will submit for the ethics committee. Later on, the principal investigator comes to know that some modifications have occurred. So that time it is called as a protocol amendment. So during the trial, if any changes have occurred, so that will be the protocol amendment. Any updates to investigator brochure, CRF and ethics documents. So any changes are there, this, they have to be maintained. Signed patient consent form. So once a trial starts, always it is said that the voluntary consent of the participant is very important. So in that case, it has to be signed by the patient and their attenders like who are coming with them if it is required when the patient is not able to sign it. Notification of serious adverse event. So anything which occurs like adverse event or the serious adverse event, they have to be maintained. Then subject identification log, like how we are identifying the subject who is participating, like by collecting their address, date of birth, hospital number, like IPD, OPD, whatever it is. Then subject enrollment log. Once the subject comes into the study, what number the subject has been assigned? That is called as the subject enrollment log. Then drug dispensing log. So what all drugs are dispensed or what is the IP, main, the investigational product which is there. 
so whether it is dispensed and whether the log has been kept record has been kept or not then drug accountability log that is how many times the drug has been dispensed what dose it has been dispensed so that we call as the drug accountability log so these are again some of the examples during then later on after completion so once it is closed out clinical trial we have to we require the final close out monitoring report like usually whenever the clinical trial is being conducted we have the interim monitoring or at the end of the monitoring will be having so you we require the interim and the final close out monitoring reports then decoding documentation especially in the case of the placebo control trials like you the sponsor will do the decoding so that time we require the decoding documentation or if any serious adverse event happens then complete subject id code list so what were the how many subjects were en enrolled what were their ids then drug accountability like as i mentioned what was the drug given like how many times it was given what was the dose how many visits were over so that is drug accountability then audit certificate like who has audited the clinical trials so whether it was a national or the international level auditing and all then final report to ethics committee and regulatory body so once it is over we are reporting or the one who is conducting the clinical trial is going to report to the ethics committee and the regulatory bodies so these are again some of the examples for after completion of the trial then we are having important is the investigator brochure like during the trial some uh, documents we require so that is one of them is the investigator brochure so here it, it is nothing but it is giving the idea for the principal investigator about the investigational product which they are going to use in the clinical trial so it contains the pre clinical and clinical information related to an investigational drug so whether whatever the uh, these things have happened for that ip before the clinical trial and during any phase of the trial for example if the phase 3 is being conducted we require the pre clinical phase 1 phase 2 the reports so that we call as the investigator brochure so this should be presented in a concise simple objective balanced format so that it can be easily understood by the principal investigator so it has like many contents like title page which provides sponsor's name the identity of investigational product and edition number and date so the investigator brochure should be reviewed at least annually and revised as necessary because the there may be some modifications or extra information will be obtained regarding the investigational product so that has to be updated on the yearly basis next we have some uh, contents of the investigator brochure as already we discussed like these are some of the contents which show that investigator brochure is provided by the pharmaceutical sponsor with the relevant and current specific information so whatever information is provided it has to be the current and relevant not the very past information then normal values what are required for that laboratory procedure what to be conducted lab accreditation certificates are there or not for example if any principal investigator investigator is going to conduct the study but if that lab is not accredited then he is not supposed to test the blood samples of the patients in that particular setup then standard operating procedure as usual for any procedure to be conducted we require the standard operating procedures then copies of questionnaires to be maintained then trial initiation report for sponsored studies and master randomization list like once the a participant is enrolled he will be randomized into the different groups and what is the randomization list that has to be maintained with the investigator brochure then we have the format this is the usual format given like the it is having list of abbreviations contents summary introduction provides the chemical name and generic or the trade name both will be there for the ip then also like it is having some of the contents then other than this the study protocol we are having the clinical study protocol so what is clinical study protocol this is like the whenever we are referring to the standard book we call that here in the clinical trial as the clinical study protocol so this is a document which is containing instructions for all the parties that is who are involved in the clinical trial that is sponsor the investigator and the institute where it is being conducted that how to conduct the clinical trial according to the objectives of the study so this we call as the clinical study protocol and some guidelines are given to perform the same 
So after the objectives and design of the clinical study, also we have to mention what is the methodology or design of the study. So these issues should be documented in the study protocol. So there will be so much details about like how to conduct, where to conduct, what is the methodology, what are the object, all will be covered in the clinical study protocol. So here it should ensure that adequate conduction of the clinical trials and collection and analysis of data are further submitted to the regulatory authorities for review and consideration. So before starting, we have to have the approval from the regulatory bodies as well as the ethics committee. Then these are some of the sections of clinical study protocol. So as you see, like whenever you open any protocol for the clinical trial, it will start with the introduction, objectives of, or the purpose of the study, study duration, number of subjects, informed consent, opinion of the ethics committee, subject selection criteria, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria. Sometimes opinion of the ethics committee will be added later after the approval is given. Then what is the methodology included? So how they have to con uh, conduct principal investigator, that is, what is the study plan to conduct particular clinical trial? How should be the schedule of that? Like how many months it is being conducted? What is the duration? How many times the patient has to come? That is study visits. And what, what interval the uh, participant has to visit the site? Then study assessment or the procedure. So how uh, like long the assessments will be carried on? On what basis, regular basis or what is the interval? So that we call as the study assessment or procedures. Then definition of efficacy endpoints. So what efficacy they have achieved. So that has to be in the methodology. What to be achieved? It should be in the methodology. Then treatment cycle. So how many cycles will be given? Or like as I said, I said earlier, how many times the patient has to visit? Then what is the treatment plan and all? It will be there in the methodology. Then in the next comes the safety reporting, which is very, very important in the clinical trial. That is, Whenever a participant is participating in the clinical trial, he may come across some of the adverse events or serious adverse events. So they have to be reported to both ethics committee as well as the regulatory authorities. So in this case, they have to report the adverse events, serious adverse events, any abnormal laboratory values of other safety parameters, withdrawal from the study. So why the patient was withdrawn? Any SAE happened or any safety reporting because of that? So if special terms are used in the documents, they should be explained and clarified in the safety reporting. Then we are having protocol amendments. So as earlier we, I said, if ever any changes are going to occur apart from what they had submitted initially, so those we call as a protocol amendment. So these are the amendments or changes in the initial study protocol. So if they are made, they have to be again submitted to the Institutional Ethics Committee or the IRB and the regulatory authorities. Then we are like uh, the clinical laboratory parameter, other safety parameters, concomitant medication, data analysis, appendix. So all these are have to be there as the documents for the clinical trials. Then the informed consent. So this is again very one important aspect in the clinical trials that is Anyone who is participating in the clinical trial, he has to give his consent voluntarily. So that one thing which I have underlined is, it is a process by which a subject voluntarily confirms that he is willing to participate in the study or the clinical trial. So this has been informed to all the study participants by giving the PIS, that is the patient information sheet. By reading that, the patient will understand that what is like where, he, what he is uh, participating into. So then the, this means a written, signed, and dated informed consent. Nowadays, we are also having the audiovisual informed consent. Then the subject should be informed about the purpose of the trial, the methods of the trial, the study drug and treatment regimen, available alternative treatment if ever he is not uh, like going to uh, show any effect for the same. Then the potential risk and benefits and possible discomfort. So always this is very important as nowadays we do the risk benefit analysis, which shows that if any risk are uh, occurring or any benefits of that study are there, they have to be informed to the patients or the participants. Then the subject also should understand that informed consent should be given freely, that consent should not be obtained through inducement or coercion. That is, there is no forceful 
like his involvement in the trial that he or she may withdraw any time in the study at any time that withdrawal from the study will not affect his or her future medical care so this is the very important things in the informed consent then study progress report so once the study is being conducted at the uh, like in between the interim uh, analysis when we are doing so we are taking the study progress report usually it is followed like every year they have to submit the progress report in some of the institution we follow the biannual study progress reports so in this whatever the study has been carried out till uh, that time how many patients are screened how many are enrolled how many are randomized if any adverse events have occurred like what is the adverse event report what is adverse drug reaction report so all this has to be there in the study progress report so along with that we should have the patient entry form that is how many patients are enrolled withdrawn protocol deviation if they have deviated deviated from the protocol that report has to be there or if they have totally violated the protocol protocol violation report is required then if ever study has been terminated in between if it is applied if it is applicable it, the report has to be there the study monitor should provide written reports on each study monitoring visit so if monitor has been monitoring has been conducted monitoring report has to be there so these are the things which we require for the study progress then case record or report form where all the details of the patients are filled in the uh, like written case report form then nowadays we have the ecrf where it is called as a electronic crf where it ensures that data collected is according to the study protocol it ensures that the fulfilling the regulatory authorities the requirements for data collection and it facilitates the effective comprehensive data processing and analysis results reporting then to promote the safety data sharing between the study team and other departments of the institution that is nothing but whatever the records are maintained in the case report forms they will be shared with the sponsors they will be shared with the regulatory authorities they will be shared with the ethics committee so everything will be clear that whatever the data has been collected it is recorded in the case records so that we call as the case record or the case report forms so these can be then filled in the electronic case report forms so this should be the data collected should in the study site during the course of the study should be comprehensive and provide true and fair information so this is very important that whatever the case uh, report form is there that should be true and all the data whatever has been collected should have the fair information on uh, the participant who are participating it the data is collected on them so only if the above criteria are met the study will be it will have the good reliability which can answer so many questions of the clinical trial then the contents of the crf so study title number investigator's name study subject or the patient's id inclusion exclusion criteria demographic data like if the patient is the, the pediatric patient is there then we require the height weight head circumference so these will come in the demographic data then detailed uh, detailed description of dosage what dose has been given what is the frequency then what is the concomitant treatment along with the ip if any other drugs are given then if any adverse events have occurred that has to be filled in the crf if, uh, next is the conclusion on subject's health like how the health is there if any adverse events have occurred or if any death has occurred that has to be filled up then investigator signature and date finally all this has to be approved by the principal investigator who is conducting the study and has to be submitted again to the ethics committee or the regulatory authorities then the again it will have the uh, past medical history if any patient is having any, any past medical history or results of physical examination primary and secondary diagnosis relevant previous treatment baseline character so it is as good as whenever the patient is coming to the hospital and we are taking all the details but here it is very particular that all these have to be filled up in the crfs so sections which are containing in the clinical agreement is all these things which have to be maintained by the clinical agreement between the sponsor between the principal investigator and the institution that they are conducting the clinical trial in a fair way so we are having some uh, like preamble acknowledgement responsibilities of all the uh, this one whoever are participate uh, whoever are conducting the trial or the institution 
terms and termination payments like what all payments will be done for the different uh, uh, who are partic who are conducting the clinical trial then patient privacy publication intellectual property uh, confidentiality so all these sections are maintained in the clinical trial agreement so other, uh, other than the clinical trial agreement whatever has been maintained so if there is no clinical trial agreement we cannot start the clinical trial then diary cards so this is the uh, last but very important thing that whenever the patient is provided with the diary card he will maintain all the things when he go back to the home like if the uh, doctor or the principal investigator has asked him to maintain some records like for example as we i mentioned like in pediatric patient when vaccination is given so if the uh, baby has come across any fever or inflammation so the diary will be given and how many times it has happened and whether it has happened or not that has to be recorded or for example as mentioned on the slide like if ever the patient has the involuntary micturition then how many times when it happened so that diary will help the principal investigator to note apart from the when they come to the site apart from that if anything has happened in their homes and all so this will give a additional information for the principal investigator to conduct the clinical trial in a good manner so these are some of the references which are used for my this uh, today's topic okay thank you so much